Good evening, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Happy, wonderful Thursday. I hope you all have had an amazing day. Welcome, welcome to the Thursday Night Town Hall hosted by the Action for Justice Collective. Listen, y'all already know if you've been watching us every month. Before we get started, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to do me a favor and hit the share button down at the bottom of your screen. I am Precious Minds and I am your host for tonight's town hall conversation. And I want as many people as possible to join us for such a powerful conversation. Tonight, you all, if you've been following us, you know we've been really tracking and talking about COVID and the impact of COVID in our communities. And so tonight is no different. We've talked about the We've, we've talked about the virus. We've talked about the vaccine. And tonight we want to talk about how do you cope with the grief and the loss that so many of us have experienced during this time as a result of this global pandemic? How do we cope as an African-American community? and make sure that we're dealing with the emotions that have surfaced uh, from the loss of life, from loss of relationships, so many different things that we have encountered during this time. So this is going to be an important conversation. We have some really, really powerful guests with us tonight that's going to be speaking, who I will introduce in a moment. But first, I need you to hit that share button and tell somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody to join our town hall conversation, be a part, make sure you engage with us tonight. So you might be saying, what is the Action for Justice Collection Collective? And I want to tell you what the Action for Justice Collection is. The mission statement is that we are a collective of business and community leaders who work to influence and enhance political economic, and the justice system to bring change to our schools, families, and community. So it is literally what the name says. It's collective, a collective of people coming together, both in business and in the community, coming together to talk about, to not just talk about, but then to be about, to work on issues to enhance the political, economic, and the justice, justice systems in our community, because we want to bring change. That's why we're bringing these conversations right to your living room, right to your kitchen table, so that you can have the information that so many of us often lack. You can join the conversation, bring your voice to the table, and you're hearing from the cream of the crop in their field. So so again, want to make sure you hit the share button. As I just said a minute ago, we have experienced immense loss of, across our nation, across our world. As a result of the coronavirus, there are some families that have not just lost one person, but they've lost multiple people in the same family. And now many of us are here and we're left to deal with the grief, the emotional anguish that this virus, you know, came kind of came in, swept in and left us all with this pain. And so tonight, we want to try to help you with that. We have some professionals uh, who are able to speak to how do you cope? How do you manage your grief? What are some of the things that you can do um, in order to survive coming out of this season and going into the next season? And so tonight's show is done in partnership with Performance Plus International. So we want to acknowledge them and thank you for partnering with us tonight to bring this information to the community. So, all right, I've already said enough. I'm going to jump right into the conversation and I'm going to introduce my first guest. The first guest tonight is Dr. Kimberly Ashby. Dr. Kimberly Ashby is a therapist for the Ladipo Group and she's going to come in. She's going to help us to understand what coping method mechanisms that we could utilize in order to deal with the stress and the emotional pain that comes as a result of loss. So Dr. Kimberly, I'm going to let you come in. I know that you could tell your story and a little bit about what you do so much better than I can. So I'm going to digress and let you share and greet our audience tonight. Thank you so much for being with us. Hello, it's such a pleasure to be here this evening. Yes, my name is Dr. Kimberly Ashby, and I am a counseling psychologist. Um, I'm born and raised in Philadelphia, and I was really drawn to becoming a psychologist because I wanted to work with Black people and support the Black community and their mental health. So it's such an honor to be here this evening. I'll share just a little bit about myself. Um, I work for the Ladipo Group. I'm a psychotherapist there, and I see um, primarily black and brown individuals in the Philadelphia community. 
Um, the Ladipo Group was created in 2004 and is a black owned company dedicated to the emotional wellness of black people and African American people in our communities. Um, and we're really just a group of black therapists who are really trying to decrease the stigma of mental health treatment. So at the Ladipo Group, I also do anti racist training and consulting. Um, and I'm so happy to be here this evening to really talk about this issue of grief and loss. You know, um, I really just want to acknowledge that this has been such a tough year, that people have lost people in their lives, um, that people are not able to connect to it with each other the way that they used to be able to. You know, um, Black people, it's so important for us to feel connected to each other because that's the way we've, we've survived for so many years. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Well, we are so excited to have you on tonight. And I think the topic that we are discussing and the expertise that you're able to bring is so necessary because I think so often we're just kind of forced to deal with things and we're forced to deal with them within ourselves and not necessarily knowing the proper way to process and the proper way to kind of cope and kind of manage um, through grief, right? Like in through separation and isolation. So I'm going to really give you the floor um, and let you talk a little bit about how do we do that? How do we do that well, specifically as a black community? Yes. Yes. So when it comes to coping, I think the first thing that Black people really need to do is acknowledge what they're feeling. You know, we need to get in touch with our emotions and really spend some time sitting down and um, grounding ourselves and, you know, responding to those emotions in positive ways. So I would say that any way that you can um, really just be aware and be in the here and now in the present rather than you know worrying about what's happening in the past or being anxious about what might happen in the future. Um, being in the here and now, which is also called mindfulness, is a really important thing. Um, so developing some kind of mindfulness practice where you can um, feel present and kind of acknowledge your emotions is the first step. And then I think the second step is coming up with coping mechanisms to help you get through those emotions. Um, so there are several coping mechanisms that people can consider. Um, I'm curious if people are out there, um, if people could maybe share in the chat, what are some of the coping mechanisms that you all are using right now? You know, what are the things that you're currently doing? Um, and while people are maybe kind of responding to that, um, I can just say uh, that, you know, there's so many different coping mechanisms that can be helpful. Um, so one thing um, that can be really important is physical movement. So doing some kind of exercise, doing some kind of, um, even if it's just f between five and 10 minutes a day, doing mm -hmm. stretching, doing yoga, getting out for a run, being outside, those kinds of things can be really wonderful for people. Yeah, I think that's so true. And as people are engaging with us in the comments, I think about that. That's one thing when I wake up in the morning, Dr. Kilm. I don't care how I feel. And I have lost someone during this time that was super close to me. So it was very, very overwhelming. I look at myself in the mirror every day. I make myself smile and I dance in the mirror every day to just try to, you know, get that weight off my shoulders first thing in the morning. So I'm glad that you already said that, like, movement is a good one. Absolutely. Movement is really important, really important. And then I would say another thing that's really important for everyone is just being connected to people in their lives, their people's relationships in whatever way you can. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a lot harder right now when you can't see people in person all the time, but you need to come up with some kind of engagement so that we don't feel like we're completely alone because we're actually in this together, right? Yes. So whether that is like a Zoom hangout, whether that is doing like a socially distant hangout in the park or um, just maintaining a text thread, you know, like something really small, but just making sure that you stay connected to the people that you care about. Absolutely. I, I absolutely agree with that. I've been on more Zoom calls than I would like to be, but I, I love when I can get with my family who's far away um, and friends and, and just have a time to just kind of not do work on Zoom, but just relate to each other. That has been really helpful, uh, especially for someone like me. I don't get to see a lot of people often. So that's been really helpful for me. Yes. I just saw in the chat that someone said that they pray and they stay active. 
And, you know, staying active, we already talked about, but prayer is something else that is a really great coping tool, you know, regardless what your spiritual orientation is or your religion is, just having some kind of spiritual practice where you take some time and really just engage with that can be so important and can really provide a lot of hope and faith in this time when it's hard to maintain hope. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what are some of the other things that we can do? Absolutely. I'm wondering um, if we could bring up um, the list of coping mechanisms that we have. Maybe I can just go through them with folks. Yes. So our production is sure accessing those coping, coping mechanisms as we speak. All right. And I'm not sure that we have that list. So um, in addition to moving and getting moving and praying, you already talked about quite a few uh, praying. And you know what? One of the things that I found is just like taking some quiet time outside, you know, just walking outside has been really, really helpful um, in getting some air. You know, some days there's been days, Dr. Kim, that I've been here from Sunday to Sunday in this house by myself. And I recognize that that wasn't healthy. Right. So I had to get up and take a ride somewhere um, and just to get some air, not necessarily to do anything, but just take a ride somewhere somewhere. And those things has been really helpful for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm someone who being outside is really important for me. So I make an effort to go to the Wissahickon and um, be in the nature trails and go for a run. And that's really rejuvenating for me. Um, I pulled up the list for so I can see it myself. So maybe I can just go through these things with people. Unfortunately, we don't have a visual, but that I think that's quite all right. Mm -hmm. um, so some other things I just want people to consider are really the ways in which they interact with their work as well. Um, you know, we're all having to work from home and that can be really challenging. There's some things that are positive about that, but then there's some things that can make it really difficult, right? Um, like time blending between work and personal time and not really having that um, defined boundary is something that a lot of people struggle with. So scheduling time off from work, um, actually having lunch breaks in the middle of the day and you know, taking regular mental health days um, on a regular basis is one way to really try to make sure that you're creating a boundary with your work. Um, another way is to plan an end of the day ritual. So, you know, what I do is at the end of my work day, I go for a run. And that kind of signals to me that, you know, my work day is over and I can transition into kind of relaxing and actually helps me relax because, you know, I'm not con as concerned or as anxious about what's going on at work because I've kind of set that firm boundary. Um, and then, you know, I saw someone else put into the chat reading. I think that reading um, a book or a magazine, listening to an audio book, listening to podcasts, all those kinds of things, while they might sound really trivial, are things that we can do to actually um, really just support our, our joy, you know, and engage in something that we enjoy. Um, and then lastly, I really want to emphasize, again, kind of bringing it back to what I was talking about when it comes to mindfulness, um, that things like deep breathing, guided imagery, and progressive muscle relaxation can be really great. And I can kind of break down what each of those are. Um, deep breathing or diaphragmatic breathing is really when you're breathing from your diaphragm or your belly. So when you inhale, your belly expands like a balloon. And when you exhale, your belly button goes in towards your spine. So taking a few moments to just do that breathing on your own at any point can be really helpful to folks and is a way to ground yourself. Um, guided imagery is just, you know, guided meditations that, um, you can find in a number of places um, where it kind of just guides you through a meditation. And um, sometimes there's imagery that takes you to different places. There's a number of different resources related to this that you can take advantage of. The Liberate app is one really great one. The Liberate app is specifically designed for black and brown people um, to practice meditation. So it's um, filled with lots of meditations that are specific to things like microaggressions and anger and sadness. And you can kind of choose your own one depending on what you're feeling. Um, and progressive muscle relaxation is a practice in which you kind of go through your body um, and kind of relax each muscle in your body. And once you've kind of gone through one muscle, you move on to the next and kind of 
bring your body through a progressive muscle relaxation, um, which tends to really calm people down as well. And it seems like right now um, they're sharing my website in which there's a number of guided meditations that I have created myself that are specifically for people of color. Um, so you can access them at my website, which is KimberlyMariaAshby.com. And yeah, these are just a few of them. One of the things that I like about what you've said so far and just talking about mindfulness is like being present and being in the moment. And I think we've gotten so far away from that. And so often we get flooded, um, like even with meditation that like requires you to still yourself to calm yourself. And we're so over inundated with technology. We're over, in, over inundated with information, with trauma, right? With things that we're constantly seeing on social media. So I think that is just such a great point of like being in the moment where you are. Sometimes that means shutting off your phone, turning off the ringer, and just really bringing yourself to a, a quiet space into a place of peace. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about like just the value of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, science has really demonstrated that mindfulness and meditation are extremely beneficial. So even if you're the kind of person who feels like, oh, I tried to meditate once, it didn't really work for me, you know, I really recommend you give it a second try because um, being in the moment is just, it's just better for our health. You know, it helps us enjoy things more, but it also um, creates the long, it increases the longevity of our lives, you know? Um, so, you know, so often, again, we are kind of thinking about what happened in the past or worrying about what might happen in the future. And when we're doing that, we're never actually enjoying the present moment. Um, we're letting that moment kind of pass us by when really that is the only moment that we actually have, right? Um, so in some kind of way, it's really important for people to try to engage in mindfulness. And there are so many different kinds of ways. I just mentioned a few, a few other ways to engage in mindfulness are things like walking meditation. You can take a walk around the block and kind of try to, um, notice how it feels to take a step and notice, um, what your breath feels like as you take a step. Or you can do eating meditation where you kind of notice what you're eating, notice the sensations, the tastes, maybe chew a little bit longer, take a little bit longer. Don't like read or watch anything while you're doing it. Just focus on eating um, or even just doing mindful things like being in the shower and noticing what it feels like to have the water on your skin. Um, these are all things that can bring us into the present moment. That's awesome. I never heard of eating meditation. Mm -hmm. Normally I'm like, let me eat this lunch before I get to the next thing. Or, you know, we're always rushing all the time. And so just, you know, I, I can imagine how that could be therapeutic though, right? Like just take the moment to savor it, to recognize and just be aware. So thank you for, for sharing those um, as well. So do you want to take us through uh, uh, some of these activities and what that might look and feel like? Absolutely. I'd love to. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take us through a guided meditation and I'll also allow us to practice deep breathing. Um, so what I'd like everyone to do is to just find a comfortable seat. And the first thing to do when it comes to meditation is to get the proper posture. So what you want to do is kind of act like there's a string going from the top of your head and pulling your head up towards the ceiling that's pulling your spine straight. I like to put my hands on my knees, um, but you can really put them anywhere. You can clasp them. And we're going to start by either closing our eyes or taking a gentle gaze towards the floor. And next, we're going to just start by noticing what it feels like to breathe. Noticing what it feels like to inhale. Noticing what it feels like to exhale. Again, as we inhale, our bellies expand like a balloon. And as we exhale, our belly buttons go in towards our spine. I'm going to ring a meditation bell to kind of bring us into our meditation.
So as you sit and listen to your breath, chances are that thoughts might be coming into your head and that's okay, that's what our brains do. But I'd like you to just kind of notice the thought, notice what it's about and then redirect your attention back to your breath. Again, just noticing the inhale and exhale. Take a moment to check in with everything that you can hear in this present moment. Maybe you can hear the sound of my voice, cars in the distance outside, the heater in your room. Take a moment to tap into all the sounds that you can hear. Now, check in with all the things that you can feel tactilely. Notice what it feels like to be seated on your chair, what it feels like for your feet to be firmly grounded on the floor, the sensation of the air on your skin or your clothes on your skin. Take a moment to tap in to all of these feelings. Now, imagine what emotions you're feeling right now. Imagine that these emotions are inside your body somewhere. Where would they be located in your body? Do your emotions have a color or a texture? Do they have a shape or a form? Imagine all of these things and where they exist in your body. Now, take a few more deep breaths, maybe make them a bit deeper than usual Extend the exhales a little longer. And continue to focus on your breathing. When you feel ready, slowly bring your attention back to the present. You can start to lift your gaze or open your eyes and take your time. You don't need to do this too quickly. And now just check in with your body. Notice if it feels any different than before. Notice if there are any aches or pains or any places you need to stretch. And that is our guided meditation. Thank you so much to everyone for engaging in that. Wow, thank you for leading us through that. I already feel more calm and relaxed. Um, as I was sitting here and just becoming so in tune with everything. I started listening to the music of the car that pulled in outside. I could hear that. And then noticing how my shirt is landing on my arms, things that I just don't pay attention to. So thank you for 
sharing that information. Is there anything else that you want to share with our audience today? Like something you want to leave them with um, today? Yes, there's one final tool that I'd love to leave folks with, and it's called 54321. And it is a great tool that you can use at any time, and I'll explain it. So the five stands for your five senses, and you start with five by identifying five things that you can see. So in a moment when you might feel anxious or overwhelmed, around you and identify five things you can see. So for me, I can see the blue of my walls. I can see the red of my bedspread. I can see um, the brightness of the light behind me. So you identify five things. Then you would do four things you can hear. So again, you know, the sounds of the cars outside, the heater in my room, the sound of my voice, three things that you can feel. So um, I can feel um, myself sitting on the chair and my feet on the ground, my clothes on my skin. Two things you can smell. I can smell incense in my room right now. And one thing you can taste. I can still kind of taste um, some coffee in my mouth. So anyway, as you do that to kind of focus in on your five senses and by focusing on your five senses, it really grounds you in the present moment. And I really encourage you to try this anytime that you um, feel overwhelmed or really just need to kind of ground yourself. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm definitely taking that and going to be using that. I saw someone who participated. Uh, Tanika says that that was just, she said, I could feel myself relaxing as we were going through the mindfulness breathing activity and um, Mike's are the same, that it was re relaxing to him as well. So these are really tangible and helpful uh, coping mechanisms. And um, thank you for sharing and for leading us through those today. And I'm hoping that if you're listening, I got to stay in my calm voice because we're now in the calm <laughs> space. <laughs> but if you're listening, I want you to make sure you share this with somebody, uh, someone that you know have been dealing with anxiety or just frustration or mental health issues that has just been overwhelming them in this season. You know, uh, these could these might be short term coping methods, uh, mechanisms, but they will help in the moment and they could lead to long term change. So make sure you share this with people that you love um, this information. Dr. Kimberly, if people want to learn more, uh, if they wanted to get in contact with you, what are some of the ways that they would do that? Yes, um, they can reach out at the Ladipo group dot com. Um, and there you can find more about me and the other therapists that work at the Ladipo Group. Awesome. Well, are... thank you so much for, there you go. Go ahead, walk us through it. <laughs> oh yeah, just, this is our website. Um, so you can learn more about our specific forms of counseling that we provide. You can learn more about our clinicians and, you know, um, consider which clinicians might be right for you in terms of finding a therapist. And if you have any questions or you would just require some further information from us, feel free to reach out and um, we'd be happy to connect with you. Yes, and all of this melanin on the screen right now is giving me all the feels um, for, listen, our people, um, you know, beautiful black, black people, at the Ladipo group, bringing uh, resources to you. Uh, and, and even in this conversation, I'm just so excited because I think that sometimes we're not given the resources for us specifically as black people. Like how do we need to cope? Like, you know, how do we manage through? And Dr. Kim, you've just done that for that for us. And I am just so grateful for that. Thank you for sharing those resources. I want to make sure I didn't cut you off. If there's anything else that you wanted to share. Awesome. Well, we are so grateful for you being with us this afternoon. And I know for myself, I'm going to replay this over and over again because I need to go and get what's those five things, the five things in my room I need to look at. I need to understand um, what the four is, the three to two and the one I believe was something like I could still taste. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so I want to remind myself over and over again um, 
how to use these mechanisms to help me cope myself when I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed and feeling a little bit anxious. So thank you again for sharing. And listen, make sure you all connect with the the, the Depot group. Um, there's a lot of resources on that website. Um, and I think it will be very helpful and very beneficial to you. If you are watching us, I'm going to ask you to hit the share button at the bottom of your screen. We're halfway through our conversation, but we're not through yet. We have a little bit more that we want to share with you all tonight. And I just want to shout out the Action for Justice Collective, bringing this information into our community. So many times, Black and Brown communities could be information starved. We can be information deserts when it comes to knowing how how to navigate some of the situations that we are that are often brought to our doorsteps not even necessarily things that we've done but situations that are brought to our doorsteps and the action for justice collective has been so diligent about providing information and bringing information to our communities to help us understand how to navigate so if you want to con connect with the action for justice collective or if you want more information make sure you sign up for the mailing list you can go right to the website. That's going to be afjcollective.org slash join. You can join the mailing list. Maybe you want to get connected and you want to work with the collective, or maybe you just want more information, resources uh, of the conversations that we've had in these spaces, or you want to know what are they doing in the community? I said earlier, they don't just talk about it. They be about it. They're out in the community doing the work. And so uh, just shout out to the collective. I'm so grateful to be a part and to work with this amazing group of movers and shakers in our city. So we're going to move on in our conversation and we're going to welcome our next guest. Uh, as, as I said earlier, we're talking about how to deal with grief, how to deal with loss, the pain of separation, um, just from not being around our family members uh, during this time of a pandemic. And I know we're heading out of it, but we're not out of the woods just yet. And so tonight we also have Dr. Gregory A. Persons, who's going to come and talk to us tonight. Dr. Persons is a chaplain. He's a grief counselor. He's been hosting grief workshops for years to help people um, understand how to deal and how to cope and get through the most difficult seasons of their life. So I'm going to let him come on. I'm going to let him share a little bit about what he does and his work. And then we'll go into a little bit of a Q&A uh, around dealing with grief during this time. Welcome, Dr. P. Thank you. I am so glad to be here with you. We are so happy to have you. I can personally speak of your work and how phenomenal your work is and how many people have been really powerfully impacted by the sessions that you offer, the groups, the community that you build around grief and loss, letting people know that just because you went through it, that you're not in isolation, you're not by right, your There's a community of people who have been through something similar. So we appreciate your work. Tell us a little bit about what you do. I know I gave an overview, but tell the, tell the world about what you do. Okay, I am um, I am a chaplain, and um, I work at the hospital. I am also at a um, I work for a, a hospice agency, also, and uh, I've been at the hospital for quite some time. University of Penn Hospital. I worked trauma at Presby Hospital for a while, and I worked trauma also at University of Pennsylvania Hospital. Um, what I do, um, I have a group called the Personal Touch Support Services. And what I do, I really offer support to our people. Um, I'm also a, um, I'm a musician. I play a little bit. And um, I never forget that I had one month, I recall playing for 23 funerals wow. in a 30 day. Wow. And I really, um, number one, I had to do uh, some of the techniques that uh, Dr. S. B. Uh, talked about because dealing with so many families, so much grief, uh, working in trauma, dealing with family members that their loved ones have died or they just got shot on the Philadelphia streets and right. dealing with all the dynamics of the families and dealing with people in hospice. So I have a very um, rich um, yeah. involvement <laughs> dealing with grief. And wow. um, so my passion really goes out to uh, people because I hear them say, even in that 
three that I did in 30 days, um, how we should be happy. In fact, I um, had to play for a funeral today and mm -hmm. somebody made the statement, this is not a sad occasion. Wow, wow. So I, um, because I had my own struggles, then I said, well, you know what? I need to address this. Yeah. And yeah. move forward, but also address it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I do. So I offer this so anybody can reach out to me. Um, I have did some grief support at the, some of the funeral homes and with various families, individually and as a group. Wow. First of all, your background and all of what you do is just robust, right? But there's intersectionality between all of it, working as a chaplain in the hospital, doing the grief counseling, um, having your own personal touch group on the side, and then even the musician piece, right? Not just playing in church, but playing for funeral homes. There's such great in intersectionality. You're not even there to be a grief counselor in the moment. Right. You're there, right. but, but yes. innately, because it's a part of who you are and what yes. you do, it's very difficult for you not to be very sensitive and aware right. in that time. So you just said something that I kind of want to, I want to harp on for a moment, right? You mm -hmm. said being at a funeral, you heard somebody say that this is not a sad occasion, right? Which for me, couldn't be further away from the truth. We know that as believers... Right. We don't necessarily mourn as the world mourns, but you right. feel the sadness. So can you talk a little bit about that? Like just being OK with the fact that death is hard. Yes, death is hard and it's not a happy time. Mm -hmm. uh, we often we often like to say, oh, well, they're not suffering anymore. Mm -hmm. We should pause. They're not suffering, but we that are left behind are suffering. Absolutely. And we say, oh, they're not. They're in a better place. Yes, they are in a better place, mm -hmm. but I am not in a better place. Mm -hmm. I am a, in a worse, most difficult place because mm -hmm. they are not here with me. Anymore. Right. So uh, it just goes back and forth. Oh, they happy. Uh, somebody told me um, just recently, oh, well, you know, uh, it's a win-win. If God heal me, it's a, if it's a win. And if I'm not healed, it's a win. Mm -hmm. I wait. I don't want to be in confrontation. I don't mm -hmm. want to get, but I'm saying it's a win-win for the person that left, not necessarily for those of us that are left right. behind. So I really, um, I had to smile when Dr. Um, Kimberly was uh, talking about a word often that we don't, and it was just a confirmation that we don't really use in our community a lot, and that's acknowledge. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Just acknowledge. acknowledge. You know, I, I have asked many people, well, how you doing? You know, after your loved one died, they said, oh, I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. And then, it like a lot of times, the time does not present the opportunity. And yeah. I will ask them, you know, if, the, if I have the time to address it, I said, so you are doing good with right. your loved one dying? Right. In denial. Sometimes we're just in denial, right? And when I ask them that, like everything, oh, well, I'm not doing that good. And I'm saying, well, that's what I just asked you. Right. How are you doing? And then, so what I have learned to do now, I ask people, well, how are you doing in this situation? Right. That's, that's a good question. That's a good you know, way to How are you doing question. in this situation or at this time? Mm -hmm. You know, because this time will be different from others. So, um, I really feel like we just need to be, and it's okay. Jesus cried because somebody died. Absolutely. You know, it's over a death, so it's okay. Right. So don't tell me to man up or I shouldn't feel that way. And why you, you know where they are. You know, I have uh, left my wallet sometime because I went somewhere um, and said, you know what? I left my wallet at home. Mm. It gives me a certain comfort that I know where it is, but mm -hmm. I am not happy because right. I wanted to make a purchase and I don't have my wallet. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Just being you know, so Yeah. It. So let's, you know, and, and yes, the scripture said we don't, you know, grieve as those with no hope, but it did not say we don't grieve. We don't grieve. Right. So we do grieve and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And then, so we just have to, um, I really just feel like we have to be acknowledged where we are and not yeah. be pulled in any direction. You know, like mm -hmm. if you, somebody's really feeling sad that day and having a moment, 
just say, okay. It's okay to have that moment. Mm -hmm. But do not say we have to be cautious of what we say, too. I know that may come up later, you know, mm -hmm. but we have to be cautious of what we yeah. say because uh, rubbing me on my back and saying, oh, it's going to be all right. And they may not say it. They may not admit it. But, like, what is going to be all right? And I'm used to two incomes right. coming in the house. Now I have one. Right. Mother's Day is coming up and my mother died. Mm -hmm. So I need you to tell me what's going to be all right. Right. So we just have to be cautious. So in personal touch, I just kind of meet people where they are. And also just I try to get people just to acknowledge where they are. And just um, when somebody see you and you have a relationship. Mm -hmm. If I if I have a relationship with Precious M, mm -hmm. well, because I see you hurt, it's going to affect me. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people are uncomfortable and they don't want to, you know, they just say, oh, well, don't take it so hard. You know, they suffered a long time or, you know, they're not suffering anymore. And I understand what you are trying to do. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just say, just need to say, you know what? Precious, I know this is hard. Mm -hmm. I'm praying for you. And leave mm -hmm. it there. Don't try to move them away. Just say, I know this is hard for you. Right. And, and at that time, the person that's going through it will be more appreciative because mm -hmm. you just met them right there, not trying to pull them away or take them somewhere. And I think, I think that's the exact way to deal with it. And I see someone just put that question in the comments about like explaining empathy. And I think you just explained what <laughs> empathy is, right? You might not be able to sympathize with that person. You may not right, have right. that same experience to be able to say, I lost a mother too, right. but you can empathize and say, just like you said, I'm just, I'm praying for you. I'm and I know it hurts. Mother. It hurts, right? Cause loss and grief and separation yes. is difficult. Yes. Uh, yes. And so I empathize with you. I, I have feel sad because I understand you have lost something, but I don't necessarily trying to mimic your emotions. Right, exactly. And we even have to be careful with that, even if it's um, if someone lost a mother. You say, you know what? I lost my mother, too. I know how you feel. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of our mother-children relationships are different. That's different, yes. So you don't know, I may have lost my mother, but me and my mother might not have had the best relationship. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And then some people, so what happened, they feel kind of offended or now they feel very uncomfortable because according to your relationship, you feel like you lost your mother, you lost the best friend you can have. Mm -hmm. and, and that other person did not lose a friend. They just lost a mother that birthed them. Mm hmm and even though it sounds hard, but the mother didn't raise them, it was somebody else in the family, it, like it goes on. And even you can lose your mother, you can lose your brother, sister. Mm -hmm. Each death and each individual grief is totally different. Yeah, I believe so that. So you, you say, oh, I sat in the seat you sat in. You know, I know I lost my son and you lost your son to cancer and somebody else lost their son to violence, street mm -hmm. violence. Mm -hmm. No, there are different types of grief. So we just have to be careful of what yeah. we say in trying to be supportive. We really have to be careful of what we say. And right now, with dealing with COVID, we all are really, um, we all are being affected mm -hmm. by COVID. And we have lost some things in some of our movement. Now we want you to move, you know, it called it, it's therapeutic. And um, and I must also say this, um, other coping mechanisms, since we talked about I must pause right here, or movement, um, you have to find what works for you. Movement mm -hmm. is very important. And I posted just this week how we should move through each day. So mm -hmm. like uh, it don't have to be major, but just when you're going through grief, just getting up brushing your teeth, putting mm -hmm. on fresh clothes out. That's movement. Yeah. Because you can get so deep in grief that you stay and don't feel like doing anything. Mm -hmm. You just drained. So we just have to be careful 
of um you know but um you know coping but also for me because i'm a culinary arts graduate and i do enjoy cooking um, i mean you're rather good at it <laughs> <laughs> and some people i post well a lot of times well this is my first time saying it publicly that's part of my coping <laughs> it's therapeutic to me so um that's part of what I do to use energy while yeah. I'm going through this process. Yeah. So there are many, and I worship. Tears, I get on my piano yeah. in here. Sometimes I put it on Facebook, sometimes I don't, because mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed of my ugly face from mm -hmm. crying and whatever, mm -hmm. releasing. But if that's the release that works, yeah. if that is the release, you can, now see, you young, you can dance in front of your window. If I do the wrong move, I'm a, my back going to be out the rest of the day. So, <laughs> no, I definitely understand that. Me, you know? <laughs> I definitely understand yeah, that. So, you know, um, we do, we do have to embrace, and once we acknowledge, I really feel like we can move forward. Yeah, I think that's so important, um, both that you and Dr. Ashby talked about that acknowledging piece. Um, I think just so often we try to brush past our feelings and act like they don't exist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They catch up with us later. They catch yes, up they with, do. Us, with us yes, later. Yes, they do. And, you know, so if you're listening so far, Dr. P has talked about acknowledging. He's talking about he's talked about empathy. He's also talked about coping methods, all things that are really helpful. I know for me lately, organizing has been a coping method for me of just getting outside of the rut of sitting on my computer all day, working, thinking about people that I've lost or yes. really, I get up and I refold my drawers yes. and, and I'm removing clutter and those types of things are really, really helpful for me. Because yes. I know depression, when depression starts to sit, sit, come in, you know, people want to clean, they don't want to do anything. And I think, you know, I, one of the things, and we're, we're going to talk about this in a second, right? Like just dealing with grief as a community, right? How do we deal with grief as a community? But one of the things that I learned going through a different difficult season of my life is you have to have a plan. Yes. You have to have a plan, right? Yes. And you say, how do you have a plan when you don't know what's going to happen? But you have to have a plan for how do I deal with, you know, these anniversaries that come up, right? The death of this person, the you know, as the years go on, or if this situation happens, what is my fallback plan when difficult situations happen? Right, period. right, right. What do I do? Right. Because innately, we'll start to isolate ourselves. Yes. We'll start. We don't want to talk to people. Yes. We don't want to deal with people. Yes. And so, can you talk a little bit more about that? Just as a community, like, what are some of the ways that we can really? And you've already hit on some of them. Like, start to really deal with grief so that we can move from one place to another. Well, like I said, now our first thing to me is to acknowledge. You know, we 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 um, and sometimes for some people are shutting down, but a lot of times. I know for myself, I will break away because I'm processing. I'm not shutting down. It's just we went through the funeral. We went through, well, right now we're not having repasses, but we went through all of that. So now, because I am normally serving, um, I'm doing something. You know, I'm, I'm cooking. I'm taking uh, food to the family house. And all of that is helping me with the grief. But we have to kind of really, like, process. We have to say, you know what, okay. And let me share uh, this. You were talking about organizing. Um, just this week, I started looking around my surroundings and um, I seen clutter that would not have been there last year. And I just went through this week, I was sharing with my brother. I said, you know what, part of this is grief. This clutter, it's not just clutter yeah. in my house. No, this is clutter in my mind, in my emotional, heart, and mental. Heart. So yeah, um, is, I don't want to throw anything away. You know, I want to make sure I got a thousand pair of socks. Let mm -hmm. me match them up. You know, and find the match because they got lost in the dryer. You know, yeah. me. And and just today, I woke up. I said, you know what? If I, I'm a, I'm gonna go through. I'm looking in the bag one more time. If I don't see the matches, they're going in the trash. Yeah. It's time to release. Yeah. It's time to release. 
Um, I have lost over 30 people mm. since last year. And mm. uh, I still get emotional, and it's okay. But mm -hmm. um, it, it, it just becomes a time like, okay, let's do self-care is the best care. Self-care is the best care, yeah. Self-abuse is the worst abuse. Yeah. So That's don't keep beating yourself up saying, you know what, it's time for me to move on. And by mm. moving on, it's not that you forgot your loved one. Mm -hmm. It's not that, no, but it is for you to say, okay, you know what? Let me move from out of this place. Yeah. And, you know, and then a lot of people, we say things, uh, and I was just sharing with someone, like people are saying things, oh, you know, to fill up space. But no, let, let's not say things to fill up space. Yeah. Let, I want you to come and be a part of my space. Yeah. Not fill up space, but I want you yeah. to become a part of my space. So therefore, it's not about you. Oh, if right. I was you, so stop the cut. You don't have to finish that statement. If I right. was you. Right. Just say, you know what? What do you need? And if you don't know, ask them. Well, what do you yeah. need right now? Right. That's what do good. You, need? you know, I don't care if it's a hug. I don't care like if a conversation. Like, what do you need right now? What has you full of anxiety? So we That's have good, our, Dr. and we all of it. We in a collective grief right now. Right. You know, I, we I losing our individual our individual losses. We have uh -huh. illness, and then don't forget, it's not just COVID. People uh -huh. dying with cancer, heart attacks, diabetes. It's so many other, I don't want to lie in the hospital, um, mm. that people are still dying. Yeah. Um, and even our economic change, you know, will cause us to kind of isolate, move back, trying to process, like, what am I going to do? Um, mm. But people that haven't lost anything, maybe, or, or, or it's like a job. Some of us have lost jobs. Uh, uh, income, uh, we still affect it. You know, loved ones, because uh, we don't oh, have, absolutely. we don't have our communication. Like, you know, I could mm -hmm. see the day I have been, I had several friends that have lost loved ones. I'll bake a cake, mm -hmm. so either they have to come pick it up, or if they can, or oh, I drop it off. But that's not what I mm -hmm. am, or we are accustomed to. You know, we go to the house. You can have conversations. Yeah. You can talk. You know, yeah. you can hug together. You can cry together. You can laugh together. Well, right now, because of COVID, all of that has been taken away, and it's quite different. Yeah. Yeah, that's it so is true. It's quite different. That's so, mm -hmm. that's, that's so true, and thank you for... Um, bringing that out that point of just like listen our new normal is just it's not even normal it's so far right, from right, normal right, and we're right, just all right. trying to navigate through that can you talk a little bit about you know people who are blaming the pandemic right for their loss right for their grief um that's blaming the pandemic and obviously people have lost family members as a result of the pandemic but you know some people it, it gets really blown up for them and, right. you know, they get really angry and really bitter. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, um, sometimes um, because we have lost, you know, people do become bitter um, and we want to blame, you know, like why did this come from and why? But now my take on that is not, let's not put all our strength in that. You know, like how somebody died, it's a poem out there that I've heard many times. It's not how they died, but how they live and et cetera. You know, so uh, we would like to blame the pandemic and it has caused a major. But the world, and you also have to remind yourself that the world has changed because of the pandemic. I'm used to going on a cruise once a year. Once a year. You, you used to go on a not... cruise like three times a year, okay? <laughs> we already know so, this information. <laughs> like three so, times a year. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, so to give that up, like I am ready to go somewhere. Yeah, and it's no, not absolutely. that easy. So I have anxiety, you know. Um, and then a lot of our uh, comfort 
that we offer or can offer to each other is nonverbal. Yeah. See, a lot of times we want to talk, you know, or make somebody laugh. It's not necessarily that. Let's just mm -hmm. be, be here with me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I really suggest that we kind of not get, um, as my grandmother could say, wound up with how the pandemic got here or what happened, but it's here. Yeah. It is real. I have lost friends to COVID. It yes, is real. It's real. Uh, it is difficult. Um, so I feel like we will be blessed and we can release that dis ease mm -hmm. if we just clear our minds and our hearts of the anger, because we will have anger. Some mm -hmm. of us have guilt. You know, we have anxiety. Yeah, that survivor's of, remorse. Yes, you know, that survivor's, you know, like, why did this happen to me? And um, mm -hmm. if I would have done, uh, I was mm -hmm. just sharing with someone today, all you have to do is breathe. Yeah. And you wake up tomorrow and something wrong. Yeah. You know, uh, our mental health uh, status is increasing our mm -hmm. domestic violence because I'm also with police chaplains. And our mm -hmm. domestic violence numbers has increased since yeah. the pandemic. So, like, we have so much um, to pray for. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of people just need us to be there. Right. And, and not a necessarily somebody trying to move you from what, but just to listen. Can you yeah. just listen to me? Yeah. Complain just be and, and, and listen to me cry listen to me and be with me when I scream mm -hmm. and not walk away. You know, that's such a great point because a lot of times people either stay away because they feel like they don't know what to say or if they're there, their being is kind of like the Martha syndrome where they're all over yes. the place. They're being busy yes. and all what to do because they feel uncomfortable. So I think you are just making such a great point with like, sometimes your presence matters. Yes. The fact that yes. you're just here in this space yes. matters because I don't really want to be alone, but I do, right. but I don't right. yes. want to be yes. alone. Right. Um, and I don't necessarily want to talk, but I feel your strength. And I think we don't, sometimes we don't understand that somebody can feel your strength. They can feel your comfort just from you being in that space. And I can remember, you know, as you know, I lost my sister Iris um, a couple months ago, but I can remember just times of her being in the hospital. And yes. I would go, or my mother and I would go, and she would yes. be asleep. And we would sit there yes. for an hour while she was asleep. Or I would come in and she would be like, why didn't you wake me up? Because I just wanted to be present yes. with yes. you. I just wanted to be here. I didn't want to interrupt your sleep. And 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 I recognize that that gave her just strength, just knowing that somebody yes. was there, yes. right? Yes. Like, yes. I didn't know that somebody was there. And I think that's just such an important thing. Point, and, and, um, and we call it a listening presence, mm -hmm. not a talking presence. Yeah, a that's good. Presence. So you know, like sit here with me. Jesus met the woman at the well. At the, mm -hmm. so you know, just meet me where I am. That's all I'm saying. Meet me where I am. And that's good. A lot of time, and a lot of times we don't really those um, that are. Uh, Christians or whatever denominations, whatever your reformations or beliefs are, we don't need to hear scriptures at that time. Mm -hmm. We know the scriptures. No, we need you to yeah. be here with us. Meet yeah. me here. Uh, exactly me. where I am. Where I am. That's so good. That That is so good. You know, and... take that, what Thomas George, he would take my hand. Yeah. Press the yeah. Lord. So yeah. sometimes I just need you to take my hand. Let yeah. him lead me. I don't need you to lead me, but let him lead me. But just take my hand. And that presence, that touch. And see, that's another thing we are missing right now, the touch. The the power mm -hmm. and the strength of a yes. touch. Yes. You that's know, so um, I, I, I see you and I want to hug you, but I'm having second, third, and fourth thoughts. Like, maybe not. Right. And that's part of our grief. specifically for... Specifically for people of faith, right? That's our yes. hugging is typically our love yes. language, right? Yes. Touching in, in a positive way is, is our love language. Embracing one another uh, is our love language. And that's really, really difficult. And
you know, just kind of going through all of the loss that we've experienced in our own church Mm -hmm. and then only being able to come together for the funerals and not being able to process with one another, you know, has been really, really difficult. Um, And so I I have one more question just, Mm -hmm. and and we've talked about it a little bit, but just, just in terms of when you have those moments to come back together and everything is different whether in the family space, whether in the church and faith spaces, how do you encourage people to embrace those moments? Because you feel when grandmom is no longer here, grandpop is no longer here, or people have lost their pastors, they're no longer here. Yes. What yes. do they do in those moments? Um, again, let's acknowledge that we lost somebody. And let's try to hold on to the strength of their life, the strength of their strength that they gave to us. Let's hold on to that and say, you know, everything will be all right. Uh, If we hold on to memories, uh, my grandmother died and what I did uh, as a tribute to her, um, when we would travel out of town, she would make a six layer chocolate cake and wow. so uh and uh, and i remember the day she died it was may 3rd that's my wedding anniversary and every so often i make that six layer cake yeah. so what happened i know my grandmother's not the only one mm-hmm. the bakery i can go to the bakery but i call that grandma bessie's cake yeah yeah so uh it was hard at first because i didn't want any parts of it but now, years later, I get a joy. Oh, I'm making Grandma Bessie cake. Yeah. So it, it, it gives me some, you know, because I'm honoring her. Some solace. By and, something that I can yeah. do myself today. Wow, that's good. So, it's like, good. you know, um, I, I don't want to start calling names, but, um, you know, when I think about people that have gone, like, I'm in the process of some things I want to do as far as writing a book. And mm-hmm. I'm going to write down many names that have went mm. this this last year, and I'm dedicated to them. Yeah. And what happened because I lost so many, and maybe someone out there has too. It kind of caused me to take a step back, so I wouldn't go forward. Because what happened when we move forward, we have to deal with our own stuff. Mm-hmm. So if I stay here, like, all right, we in a pandemic. It's not that they gone forever. It's just like none of us. So I, I, it seems kind of temporary. And... Handle, like, oh, well, we haven't seen anybody. In the right, so right. You rest in that. But no, the day will come. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be quite different. Yeah. And I right, even right. think of, uh, because we lost so many in our leadership, I think about our communion service. Yeah. Uh, lining up the clergy and I mean, mothers yeah. that we have people that have gone. Uh, it will be quite different. It will be different. So what so what I say is embrace it. If you start crying, so what? Don't say, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I'm not gonna say I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm gonna just say, give me a moment. That's good. So don't apologize because do we apologize when we're laughing and talking with each other? No. Mm. That's good. And, and people will come to you, but when they see you crying, they'll pull away from you. Like, oh they yeah. you know, going through something. Well, don't I'm t- let me share this. Uh, maybe I'm talking too much. Uh, no, this, this I, is good stuff. I always say, if I can't be a friend when you need me, mm-hmm. when do I supposed to be a friend? Right. That's so true. That's so, so true. Yeah, I, I don't. I feel uncomfortable because Precious Emma is going through something, mm-hmm. but I need to be here for you. The fact that you oh, keep that's... telling me Precious Emma is right. hilarious. <laughs> because but you're right. that's, but that's because that's what it's needed. I don't yeah. need you to pull away from me now. Mm-hmm. We say we sisters and brothers, or we aunts, we cousins. You mm-hmm. know, we have our own like kind of community, and now all of that has stopped. Um, all of that is a part of our grief and what we're going through. Right. I, I think that's so good. This is this is helping me. Um, uh, Nelly and I talk often just about kind of the pain that we felt and experienced with with the loss of Iris and, you know, having different experiences. There's people yes. that, you know, um, 
will say, well, you need to move on, not move on, but like, like you said, it's going to be all right. Or you don't have to keep crying about it. She's in another place. But I can tell you something that was really helpful for me that I want something I really appreciated on her birthday. Um, so you talked about the tribute thing. So we we have some ideas of things that we want to mm -hmm. do. But on her birthday, one of my cousins just texted me and said, I'm reaching out because I know this is a difficult day for you. She said, do you need dinner? I will have dinner sent to your house. Have you eaten already? She says, are you okay? Do you need a girl's night? And I appreciate it. Though. Yes. Was very yes. Thoughtful yes. And I was okay. Yes. I had already eaten dinner. Right. You know, right. I was okay. But it was so thoughtful just to say, yes. Yes. I know that I know what this day means to you. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. and so yes. just allowing people, like you said so many times, to be in that space, even when I'm going through, uh, not feeling that I am weak because I'm crying or because I'm having a moment. But knowing that this too is going to pass. Yes. Yes. You know, and, and yes. considering that at some point we're all going to experience loss in our lives. Yes. Yes. Now, how you choose to deal with it is up to you. Right. Yes. But how I choose to deal with it, I need you to accompany the way that I am dealing with my emotions and right, my feelings. Right. So that is so great. And this is, is so helpful. We're, we're coming to a close. Is there anything else that you want to just kind of leave with people? Any final thoughts around? Well, uh, yes, um, I have offered, and sometimes I do offer, you know, like, oh, well, just come, you know, because I have different um, videos, I have different uh, exercises that really would help people during their grief, but they talk about it with me, but they won't follow through with me. Yeah. You know, oh, I offer, oh, I, I'm going to get back to you, and I never hear anything. Yeah. So what I am saying, sometimes if you get, we call it a safe place. Um, but uh, I thank God for Dr. Asby, because a lot of times our people, uh, I feel like uh, our culture and our religious, that we feel like, oh, no, we don't need that. Yeah, that's We so don't true. need that. You know, what yep. What? What we say, um, what, what have we heard our grandparents say? What yep. happens in the house stays in the house. That, and, and that's it, so... And what, and what happened, it really didn't stay because I see your behavior outside yes. of the house. And it's because of something that you have that not acknowledged. Yes. And then you have to talk to somebody that can help you through this journey. It's yeah. a journey. Yeah. And I don't care how old or young, it's a journey. And sometimes when you're around people that can have, help you navigate through that, mm -hmm. then you need to call personal touch support yeah. services. You know? <laughs> Because this is what I do. Absolutely. And, um, and, and it's helpful. And what happens sometimes, one conversation can be helpful. But can you imagine if we mm -hmm. uh, did four weeks? Yeah. And, yeah. And not, and not four weeks of bringing tissue and we just going to cry it out. No, working through it. Yeah. Going yeah. through is better than being stuck. I know that's right. Going through is better Going than being through stuck. is better than being stuck. Yeah, that that is so good. That is so good. And and just your last point, even about what happens in this house, that is such a traumatic mindset. Yes, yes. You know, I can yes. literally say I believe in prayer and therapy. Yes, yes. I believe yes. in both. I yes. think they're important. They're both important. I believe in prayer and therapy. And, and that final point that you just made, and I hope it resounds for those who are listening, that going through is better than being stuck. I'm telling yes. you, Dr. P, that, that, that boy is good right there. <laughs> and my Eddie Murphy voice, that, that boy is good, okay? Um, I, I literally had just told somebody earlier today, they were texting me, and I said, you need to you need to get with Dr. P. It's like, you need to get through this grief in yes, a healthy yes. way. You need to get with Dr. P. And like you said, not just one conversation. Right, right. You know, and I know I will be, oh, yeah, oh, you know, oh, I talked to him, but that was only one time. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. Because what happened, if you really look at ourselves um, a year later, two years later, we still dealing with some things because they have not been acknowledged. It has not been addressed. Yeah, absolutely. It has not been our fears, our discomfort, our dis-ease. It has not been touched. Like, oh, no, we're not going to deal with that. And if we ignore it, it's going to go away. It does not. 
And see, I think that, that, that what people don't understand is it's one thing to miss somebody, yeah. right? Yeah. Year over year, because you miss their presence. Grief is a different thing. And if it's, yes. if it's not really addressed appropriately, it can be birthed into yes. something larger. Oh, yes, it can. It can lead to depression. And let me share this. It's a fine line between grief and depression. Yeah, that's so good. People, people that are depressed don't eat. People yeah. that are grieving don't eat. No appetite. People that are grieving eat all the time. People that are depressed eat all the time. Yeah. People that are grieving can't sleep. People that are depressed can't sleep. It's yeah. a fine line. Yeah. So we have to kind of develop and know what it is that we're dealing with, and then we can move forward. Uh, yeah. One, uh, a friend of mine that lost her two children um, in a water accident and one body was not retrieved. Wow. It was 12 and 16 years old. Uh, she just um, have a book that I ordered. It's called um, Hello Again. So if anybody mm -hmm. out there, you have lost children and I'm getting her to come to Philadelphia once the pandemic to do a seminar, a workshop for us. And she said this in her book. She said it was a cocktail, her grief or the way she felt inside was a, a cocktail mixed with rage, anger, fear, hopelessness, and abandonment with a side of grief and bereavement. Wow. Wow. And all of that is so heavy. Yes. She said you find yourself in a ring that you did not sign up for, in a fight that you didn't have, training or skills to fight in. Hmm. Wow. I'm, I'm going to leave it right there. That's so good. <laughs> we're going we to have to continue this conversation another time, but that is so good. Like, just uh, uh, Do you want me to read it again? again? Go ahead. One more time. <laughs> read it to the people in the back. <laughs> a cocktail mixed. It was a cocktail. What she felt inside was a cocktail mis mixed with rage, anger, fear, hopelessness, and abandonment with a side of grief and bereavement. Wow. You find yourself in a ring that you did not sign up for, mm. in a fight that you did not have training or skills to fight in. Wow. I rest my case. Wow. That A is... Acknowledge what has happened. Mm -hmm. Know that it's hard. Mm -hmm. Know that it's painful. And mm -hmm. know that you can't get through this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. You can't that, get through this. That, wow. I think she explained what so many people could relate to. Yes. With so many people, and the book just sounds like it's uh, awesome. Oh, yes. Interesting. Um, so many people, I see somebody just acts like the difference between grief and bereavement. So do you want to take that? You want to explain? You want me to explain? You can explain. So bereavement is, is the act of losing somebody, right? So that's why you get bereavement time at work. Right. It is the act of losing someone. Grief is all of the emotions, the feelings, and all of the things that comes afterwards, right? So you have that initial loss, and then you have everything that kind of compounds together after that loss. So I think they're similar, very similar, but I think that is the slight differentiation between the two of grief and bereavement. Um, so, Brother Robert, I hope you got that. Um, but uh, this has just been powerful. This has been good. If you're watching, I'm going to encourage you to share it. We're at the end, but we're going to, you know, we want people to watch the replay because I think people can get healed just from this conversation. Yes. And, and yes. it may just be the beginning of the healing, right? right? Yes, Maybe the yes. start to say, I can pull myself out of this place. Yes. yes. And, and, you know, I think people would want to connect with you, Dr. P. And figure out how can I really work through this? Because the reality is, is most people don't want to be sad forever. Right. Exactly. Most people exactly. don't want to be in loss forever. And so you see on the website here, go ahead. Um, you can go, yes. Dr. P, talk us through this a little yes, bit. Yes, this is um, drgregperson.com. You can also uh, reach me that way. And um, 
it, it's, it, it gives you a brief bio of myself. Well, it's probably a little old now, but it's a bio of myself. And then um, just dealing with grief, how we can go through, you know, and get in touch with me. I would be glad to do, we can do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, Zoom. And then I also have the Council for Relationships, you know, um, and I also encourage you to get in touch with the uh, La Depot group. Um, this is a uh, council for relationships, whatever, whatever you're going through. You know, I just like to have the resources so you can go to somebody, um, you know, a grief counselor, a therapist. Um, I do grief support. I am not a therapist, but uh, I do mm -hmm. grief support. And um, this is somebody you can get in touch with. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. And Thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you so much to both of you, Dr. Kim Ashby from the Ladipo Group and to Dr. Gregory Persons from Personal Touch. Um, I think just such a wealth of information has been shared tonight. Uh, again, if you are not connected, get connected to the Action for Justice Collective. Get connected to the Action for Justice Collective. There are wonderful things that are happening. It's stuff that you don't see. Um, even when they're not online, they are out in the community. They're helping out with vaccine, shot, vaccine shots, all type of things. So get connected. Join the mailing list by going to www.afjcollective.org slash join. And just get connected. Um, it was started by a band of brothers in the city who said that we are not okay with the status quo. And they want to do something about what's going on. So we hope that you enjoy this conversation tonight. Thank you so much for those who listened in, those who's going, who are going to listen to the replay. Again, we just want to acknowledge our partner, Performance Plus International. Thank you for helping us um, and partnering with us for this conversation tonight. And listen, we will be back on April 29th, I believe it is the fourth Thursday of April. We will be back next month with another conversation. I'm sorry, it's April 22nd. We will be back with another conversation. We want to make sure that you plan ahead. Oh, it is April 29th. I'm sorry. You plan ahead and you join us for that conversation next month. Uh, more good things coming your way. But we just want to say thank you. Thank you again for being with us tonight. Uh, it has truly been a pleasure. And we will see you all soon. Have a great night.